book called this Lori Early Skin Tones, along with Jorg Dubin Brushstrokes, write down a few things. I like smooth skin tones, but they are not nice to paint. <laughs> Hello, mom and dad at home. Not nice to paint. So uh, the more painterly, the easier. Write that down. No brush strokes, no easy. They have a heart attack. So uh, level fours. We have levels of skin tones. Level one would be like pop art. Level two would be like Jan Wayne. Lucian Freud. Write down Lucian Freud. Lucian, Lucian Freud is a pretty good starter. He's a classic. That's what they say. He's a Lucian starter skin tone. Freud is his name. Starter skin tone is normal. Okay. <sighs> Hope I don't dip my brush in that thing. Somebody <laughs> warn me about it. All right. So this is going to be the. Uh, there's a lot of different palettes for skin tones. Millions of ways you can make them. Well, hundreds. Millions. millions. Millions of ways. Thousands of ways to make skin tones. I am going to show you a standard, which is um, yellow ochre, white. So these are all the, these are the recipes right here. White, yellow ochre, magenta, and then there's a twist coming up here. And then uh, raw umber, not burnt umber. Burnt umber, weird. Don't do, don't do burnt umber. So um, raw umber, magenta, yellow ochre, and you're going to have a, a decent skin tone. So here's like my skin tone. Blah, 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 blah. So it looks like, you know... Looks like a kind of a lighter color, but this has a lot more magenta in it, probably because the printer was screwed up anyways. But, uh, so I'm going to show you the basic concepts. Number one, write down, start with the shadow color, which is going to be primarily uh, raw umber and magenta and a little yellow ochre, and avoid white. So when you're going in between highlights and shadows, you got to rinse out your brush, because you don't want to go from a highlight to a shadow, otherwise it gets a little gray and muddy. So I'm going to take a little raw umber, and a magenta, and then this will give me a nice uh, darker base. So uh, right now, starting with the magenta, block out some of the major shadow areas, like right in here, and, whoop, too wet. So when you guys are blocking out the shadow areas, write down thin, thinner paint, but solid coverage. So it's not a glaze, so it's actually like solid, and it's gonna be way too dark. So too dark, a little bit too dark, and you're blocking out all the maps of like the face, like the structure. So remember the fat ramps? So like right in here, I'm gonna do a little fat ramp here. So, and then right here, this part of the mouth. So watch all the shadow areas. So right here, and then, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little, I'll go back over my eyes here. So I got the uh, reflections in here. So underneath the eye, so the eye shadow. Looks like you had a big art party the night before. Look at that, okay. So, and then even in this section right here, I'm going to do a little bit of a, more of a shadow. And this is the, the raw umber and magenta. With Lori Early, she even, she throws in a hefty amount of magenta. So I'll get a little sillier with that. So now I'm doing the, the magenta, scrubbing it in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then here's another fat ramp over here. So you can kind of see that. I'll just, boop, boop, smiley face. Okay. So, and then I'll even get rid of some of this hair over here. I'll go a little darker. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm just kind of scrubbing that in there. So this is like a, a dark base. Magenta, burnt umber. That's it. Pretty simple. So then, <clears throat> gets a little more complicated. So then I'm going to do the magenta, um, burnt umber, and a little of the yellow ochre. And that'll get me a lighter tone, but I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. Not a lot, baby girl. Just a little bit. And then, I'm going to put this over the whole thing. So I'm going to put this over everything except for the areas that I want left that dark, which is almost nothing. And then the brush strokes, you guys love blending so much. It, you know, gives me gas watching you guys blend so much. Just don't worry about the blending. So right now, instead of blending colors, try to mix up colors that are in between. So rather than trying to make this go from like dark to light, here's what you guys like to do. You're gonna put dark here and the sponge will go, I'll blend that all the way up. Oh, actually that's pretty good. But uh, you guys will like blend and like keep pushing the paint. Don't push the paint. Don't, don't push the paint. That's actually a good phrase. 
Okay, I'm coming up with t-shirt slogans here, in case you want to steal these. So, don't push the paint. All you got to do is um, make sure when you're adding this stuff, then I'm going to put a little more white. So, and the other thing with skin tones, I'm going to show you how I mix this. So you can take like a little magenta here, and then a little bit of the yellow ochre. And then you can do the blender, where you spin the brush around, and then you mix it into another color. And then you'll get a full spectrum. We'll show you. What? I should have a mirror right here. That would be awesome. Okay. So, sorry, I got excited about next year. Okay. So then I'm going to mix up the color. And then right now when you mix up colors, try to have it only 10% different. And so you don't want to put on a bright highlight on top of um, something that's really dark. So this might even be too dark or too light. <clears throat> so this is like 30% different. So instead of trying to blend this like this, so rather than trying to blend it, no, let's forget. Uh, don't blend, just mix up another color. So I'm going to mix up another color, value, and then uh, a little bit here. I should show more of the highlight, but that's okay. <clears throat> and then write down wet paint. So it's like pure paint right out of the tube, you know, that moisture. So you don't want any thinner than the normal paint. So then I'll do a little more of the magenta and the highlights here. Oh, it's so cute, little rosy cheeks. Okay, so I'm coming in here, and then I'll start adding more of the shadows in here. So the skin tones, and I'm just kind of like the brush strokes are gonna follow the contour of the, the face. So I'll come back in with the shadow, mix this up a little bit, and it should take you a little while to get the skin tones. So it's not about like fast brush strokes. You're better off just going one brush stroke, look at it, get back, rub your chin. That always looks cool. You do one hand on the hip, like this. That always looks kind of good. And then tilt your head back and forth. That's another good approach. You want to be able to change it a little bit. But you can see I'm going over the whole thing. And then you don't have to worry about lifting so much because you're not really pushing the paint. You're just blending it by going over it. And so you'll be able to see the, the value changes here in a second. So I could leave some of the uh, darker shadows, but I'm going to go over most of this, and I'm going to lighten it up. So I'm following the contour. So my brush strokes are going this way on the cheek, following the curvature, and not even trying to do small strokes. But you can see that color looks pretty dang good, just like that. And so um, I'll blend this out too a little bit. And you can have more magenta. And then right down, uh, one of the little tricks can be the cerulean blue. So cerulean blue in the magenta, it can do, if you add a little more of the cerulean blue in there and a little bit of the raw umber, it's kind of a cooler shadow. And then Lori Early uses uh, some of these things in some of her other paintings. But uh, you can add the cerulean blue and violet, and it'll be like a cooler shadow. And it can look... Um, well, these are more of the magentas type, so maybe I should almost stick to that, but that's okay. So magenta, and you can kind of see like that shadow in there, so you can paint that in, and it almost looks like a little beard. I'll give it a little stubble. Okay, so now I'm doing the magenta and a little bit of the color interpretation. So look at that blue. So I'm just kind of wiping that, that in there to create a little bit more of a cast shadow. So magenta, blue, raw umber is like a nice little shadow. And it's only 10% darker, so I went back into the shadow, but you can't put this shadow color over your bright highlights. It won't work. So <clears throat> I'm going to call that done for the base. Now I need to bring it to life. So now to do that, so a little review. No blending, bold brush strokes going the same direction. Always change the paint like 10%. No more than that. You guys are going to put like a dark value, and then you're going to blob on this really bright highlight, and then you're going to do this, and you know, you're going to cry. So skin tones and skies, two of the hardest things to paint. Like you can get decent skin tones. <clears throat> and confident though. So a lot of you guys that even have decent skin tones, you guys will paint and then you just rub and rub and rub and you're like afraid of like having the brush stroke show. Don't worry about those. My paint is getting drier than popcorn fart. Gotta lighten this up. Whoops, I'm on camera. Okay. So I'm gonna take this thing, a little more of the yellow ochre highlight, and then this is gonna be too bright here. So I'm going to do a little bit, and here's a fat ramp. So I'm going to just block out like where some of the highlights are going to go. So you can kind of see, even with exaggerating it, I'm going to leave these here. So rather than trying to blend it, I'm kind of like sculpting. 
So I'm sculpting this, uh, the highlights out, leaving these brush strokes, and they're just like bold, simple pattern brush strokes. Now instead of blending, I blend by uh, mixing up another color. And then I should have like somebody stand by with a spray bottle keeping this wet. Acrylics, when you get, uh, once you guys get good at acrylics, I will we'll let you guys do the um, oils. And oils, oh my god, after acrylics, if you get decent acrylics, then you go to oil, you're like, oh my gosh, oils, where have you been all my life? Because then you can take a nap, which I do. I like go, go outside, watch TV, watch Oprah, take a nap, come back, and my paints, I can still blend with them. So now I'm just coming in here and then tapping in a slightly darker color. So I'm building it up back and forth. So right now I'm build the skin tones up and then you can actually add more shadows to them and then build them up. So it's kind of like abstract where you like paint, destroy, paint, destroy. Oh, I forgot about this inside of this face. Oh my gosh, I just turned away for a second and my paints are dry again. Okay. And then not too thin. So the other thing is you're gonna to wanna to go really thin with the brush, with the paint. You're gonna go, ooh, I'm just gonna do a little glaze. Thick. So just because it looks good, uh, light, you still need to add that um, highlights on it with a little bit more paint. So now I'll even get a little bit brighter. So this is like 10% lighter now. So, and I'm not even letting it dry because I don't have to worry about lifting because the only time you have to worry about lifting is when you move the paint. If you apply the paint, you don't have to worry about the um, highlights and shadows lifting off. So I'm gonna do a little bit more of a bling there. Fat ramp. A little ramp here, a little blip on the chin. This is sort of like the grease phase of your um, your uh, portraits assignments that you guys did in Art 2. Good times. Okay. <coughs> then this, this edge, too harsh. So I'll come back in and then add in a little more shadow. But the shadow is only going to be 10%. It was like 20. 10% lighter or darker. And then uh, just tapping that in. And then the brush strokes, don't try to hide your brush strokes, make them good. So write down, uh, work on the quality of the brush strokes so they look confident. And don't try to hide your brush strokes. Make them look like, it's like, yeah, those are my brush strokes. So a lot of artists are famous for the brush strokes. So they're actually, they make, you know, like Van Gogh, Post Impressionism. So they actually make a money selling her paintings by this recognizable brushstroke. George Dubin, wait till you see his stuff. It's uh, really cool. So I'm just kind of tapping the paint in, and then honestly that could be pretty much done. And then I could actually add the small details and highlights and shadows. But that is the basic palette though. Cerulean blue to get that nice little shadow in there, that's kind of the key. And if you want it more uh, gray, it's just going to be the raw umber and white, you know, to give you like a nice, you know, more of a natural looking skin color rather than more interpretive. Then, whew, last phase. So let's say this is all dry. So now, if I was in a cooking show, I would have this dry already. But um, right now, to change color, value is what you have to concern yourself the most with. So right now, focus on value when you're painting skin tones. Color can change so fast, it's not even funny. So, I'll show you some not even funny color changing. So, although it's not dry. Hmm. Should I try it anyways? I'm feeling silly, so I'm gonna go ahead and try it. So, let's say if I want a little more magenta. Well, that's gonna lift. Well, this will lift, but you'll see that what I'm talking about. So then you can take uh, a glaze, so then write down, change the color by putting a glaze on so watch this, I'm gonna do a thin wash, magenta, and then with a sponge, I can just do a slight glaze on it, and I lift it a little bit. I'll do it after it's all done. But you can change it to a more of a, a rose, a magenta color, or the blue and gray it out. And so, but as long as your values are underneath, then a thin glaze or a medium glaze, you'll be able to change everything. And those are the base palette for skin tones. Thank you very much, I'm here all week, all right.